Hey, what's up, y'all? It's JS Method or Coach JS, you guys may know me as. And today we're talking about the math of minions, talking about how much minions are, are worth, how much you should prioritize minion waves over other objectives, and when you should take roams and that kind of thing. So, the very first thing that I want to talk about is literally just how much a minion wave is worth. So, melee minions are worth 21 gold. So, in a normal minion wave, we're going to have three melee minions, and we're going to have three casters. Three casters. So a normal minion wave is worth 105 gold plus a very significant amount of XP. Um, now, cannons spawn for the first 15 minutes of the game, cannons spawn one every three waves. They spawn every third wave. Uh, from 15 minutes to 25 minutes, they spawn every other wave. And past 25 minutes, they spawn every wave. And their gold is also variable. It goes anywhere from 60 gold to 90 gold. And actually in mid lane, they're worth 10 less um, for the first 14 minutes of the game. So it's easier just to think about these as averages at different points in the game. Uh, for the first 15 minutes of the game, the average gold per wave is about 125 gold. When you factor in that every third wave, they're going to have a cannon that's worth roughly 60 gold plus a very significant amount of XP. Right. So these numbers are really, really important because uh, once you can learn what things are worth, you can start comparing things. You can really figure out what the right choice is. One of the most important things I learned, you know, from my journey from gold to diamond was literally just comparing the numbers of different things. Right. So if we know how much a mini wave is worth, we can figure out when to roam. So I'm going to talk about something here that I call the opportunity cost of a minion wave opportunity cost of a minion wave so let's say there's a normal minion wave here and let's just say it's 125 gold on average now if you leave to go bottom because you decide that you want to go bottom or there's a dragon here or something and what this means is they get the minion wave and you lose the chance at getting this minion wave and now like nobody on your team collects this so it's a two minion wave swing it's 125 twice which is 250 gold plus a very significant amount of XP. So plus a ton of XP, plus the XP, plus the things that are harder to measure, like the priority, the tower plating, all that kind of thing. So what does this mean? This is the opportunity cost of leaving. This means that the second you decide to go bottom and leave that mean wave, you lose this stuff immediately. Oh, whoops, I just threw my pen. Okay, um, you lose this stuff immediately. So if you want to roam, you have to get more than this more than half the time for that roam to make sense, right? So um, if we ask ourselves how much a kill is worth, a kill is 300 gold and a very, very small amount of XP plus the death timer, plus the timer. So these two things are, you know, taking into account the priority of the XP are roughly equivalent. That means if there's a wave in mid lane and you want to roam bottom, the roam, you have to get more than a kill more than half the time, or that roam is not worth it. That is the opportunity cost of a wave. And it's a very fundamental roam idea. This is why shove and roam is the mantra shove and roam. You have to shove. So you don't have this opportunity where you're just losing yourself kills, right? This is one of the most common game fundamental mistakes you see from bronze and silver players. It's just a complete disrespect for waves. So you, you'll see them just leave the wave and they might even get a double kill, but all of a sudden they're down a bunch of XP and they're down a bunch of kills. I'm like, well, how did this happen? I'm getting my double kill. It's because you're just giving your opponent free kills constantly. You cannot do that. Um, so this is the opportunity cost of the wave. One other thing I want to mention is XP. Um, XP is a very like, it's a very important stat because experience is super important and minions give a ton of it, right? I don't know the exacts about the XP and everything, but the way you can visualize it is like minion waves give a ton of XP. One minion wave gives a ton. Uh, like one kill gives a very tiny amount. One kill, one ward kill whatever else it is give a tiny 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 amount so you could basically imagine like they're not giving you xp at all relative to what the wave's giving so 
that's super significant, especially if your champion really matters about XP and stuff. There's some of these early game champions that are okay with falling behind XP, like, you know, Pantheon or whatever, because they're just perma roaming anyways, but you cannot afford to lose that XP on normal champions. So a minion wave is so incredibly important. And if you leave it and there's a two wave swing, it's even extra important because now it's like double the punishment. Now, this idea of opportunity cost, you can apply to different parts of the game, right? Like you can think about a jungle camp. Now I'm not entirely sure how much chickens are worth exactly, but they're like roughly 80 gold, I think. But if you take the enemies, well, you get the 80 gold and you also deny them the 80 gold plus the XP, right? And that's like 160 ish gold plus the XP. This is worth more than, well, what's something else that's worth about 150 gold? You can think an assist or a plate. So that will tell you that getting the enemy Raptors is worth more than getting a plate or getting an assist. So that's kind of how you could break down comparing the value of two things, right? Or once you know that the, the opportunity cost of leaving this wave is about a kill, well, now you have a frame of reference for, you know, um, comparing your roam. You're like, okay, on one side, I have one kill mid lane that I can deny, right? If I go there, nothing happens. It's dead even. If I go bottom, now you kind of ask, you have to ask yourself, what are the chances of me getting stuff? If it's like a 50% chance at a double kill, then this is completely even, right? Because half the time this is going to be more worth, half the time it's not, right? And then it ends up being kind of like completely even once you run that out. So it doesn't really matter. But if it's like an 80% chance at a double, super worth it. If it's 50% chance of one kill, then this roam is never, ever, 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 ever worth it, right? And this is one of the most common mistakes that I see in my coaching where we'll go coin flip a kill bottom but we'll just lose this wave and now we're losing and now we just threw a perfectly winnable game so this is one of the most important game fundamentals um it's super important to get this when you're a beginner this is probably like one of the most important things to understand as a beginner um these minion waves are so incredibly valuable i'm actually gonna tell a story uh i once was smurfing on a bronze account that was in legit legit bronze um, not Smurf Q or anything. And I found this Zed player who, who was like 1500 games. It was like two months into the season and he had like 1500 games, um, all on Zed. I should write games cause that's confusing. I was writing G for gold. 1500 games, they were all on Zed and I think he was like bronze too. And this guy, it's really funny. He had better mechanics in terms of like being able to land his Qs and being able to do the other parts of the game. He had better mechanics than like some silver and gold players that I coach, but he was bronze too. How does that make sense? Well, literally on the first wave, he just left the wave and went to go to like my jungle for some reason. I don't know, they get a, a vision. I don't know if he thought he's gonna kill my jungler. I don't know. Anyways, I hit level two first. He can't really play the lane. Well, then he just leaves the lane again. And then he just goes straight bottom. And then he even gets a kill. I think he was like, he got like five or six kills in lane phase but I got so much XP and so much gold and so much priority through the minion waves, it didn't matter. And I just pub stomped that game and I didn't have to do anything. I just literally sat mid and let him leave and lose himself the game. So the moral of the story is minion waves are so important. The whole game revolves around minion waves. It's really important to understand that these things are the most valuable thing in the game, especially because they can buy you space. They buy you lots of, first of all, they're worth a lot of gold and XP, but they also buy you a lot of space. They buy you a lot of vision. They buy you a lot of opportunity to go do things. You cannot go roam unless you have a timer, unless the roam's like 100% chance at a double kill, right? Um, so then you also know the, the exceptions, right? 100% chance that a double kill is worth more than a wave. Or let's say there's only like two minions for you to kill. Well, those two minions aren't worth a lot, right? Because it's like 30 gold twice. It's, it ends up being like 60 gold. Yeah, you can go coin flip the kill for that, right? So that's how you can think about minion waves. That's how you can look at it in your review of asking like, was this play worth it in terms of actually how much the minion wave was worth and how much, how likely I think this roam is worth. Super, super important super beginner fundamental i hope you guys appreciate this video check out my other fundamentals these are super important to learn to get you to the next level i hope this helps you on the rift i'll see you guys tomorrow peace